Game of the day on Thanksgiving saw the Bills visiting the Lions. Just under five minutes to play in the fourth quarter, the Bills were trailing the Lions 22 to 19. First and 10 from the Detroit 39 yard line, you see Josh Allen connects with Stephon Diggs for the first down. Bills move the chains. Later in the drive, Bills had second and 10 in the red zone. Allen throws in the direction of Diggs, but he can't come down with the ball in his hand. Lions called for roughing the passer on the play, Sacho. And you can't make a mistake like that, especially late in the game. You have to understand that the ball is out. Don't throw him to the ground. No penalty will be called. And it was costly. Two plays later, second and goal. Allen finds Diggs off the slant for the touchdown. Now, the Bills missed the extra point, so they lead 25-22. Under a minute to go now for the Lions. Fourth and inches from mid near midfield. Amon Ross St. Brown in motion. Takes the handoff. Gets the first down. Lions still alive. Couple plays later, Jared Goff. Hits St. Brown over the middle, but St. Brown falls just short of the first down marker, which means the Lions have to settle for a field goal attempt. This is a 51-yard attempt from Michael Badgley. It's going right. It's oh, it curled back in. The Lions tie the game at 25. So 23 seconds left for Josh Allen. What do you think, Sacho? He got a shot? It's Josh Allen. He always had a shot. Even though he was struggling earlier in the game, this is a frozen rope. 40 yards down the field. I, I was speechless. We got Justin Jefferson highlights, Stefan Diggs highlights. That is still the trade that keeps on giving, is it not? Allen fits the ball in perfectly. 13 seconds to go now. Bill second and seven from the Lions, 36. That's Allen running. He's wincing in pain, but we know he's going to keep doing it. Next play is a 45-yard game-winning field goal attempt by Tyler Bass. It is good. The Bills hang on. They win 28-25 to 25 over the Lions, capping off a really fascinating week for them. Uh, which saw them play in Detroit twice in the span of five days uh, because of the storm that hit up there in Buffalo. But they managed to win both games. So is Josh, you were watching Josh Allen play yesterday. Does he look to you like he's playing at a championship level? No, he doesn't. Doesn't look to anyone like he's playing at a championship level. What has he got? Four red zone turnovers. The UC, his arm is still injured. You can tell he's not making throws the way that he usually makes throws. Now I get it. The fourth quarter, he did look dominant. And there were some, not only the runs, but some of those throws he made in the fourth quarter that reminded you of who Josh Allen is. But the usual Josh Allen we see is making those throws on a much more consistent level and a much more consistent basis. We're all waiting for that arm injury to heal. We don't know when it will heal, but until then, he's not going to look the same, and he hasn't looked the same. Chris Canty, do you agree? What are you seeing from Josh Allen? Well, listen, poor clock management by the Lions left the door open. 23 seconds on the clock. Turns out Josh Allen only needed 21, and that was an absolute strike that he threw to Steph Diggs. But people forget that this guy ran the ball twice on that drive for 12 yards to set up the go-ahead score, the game-winning score. And so I look at Josh Allen as a quarterback that always gives you a chance. But I'm with Sacho. The red zone turnovers have got to stop. I mean, the Buffalo Bills had 19 turnovers on the season, which leads the league, and they had six of those turnovers in the red zone. That is unacceptable. Most of that is Josh Allen. And then you're talking about this team having 10 red zone trips with no points on the season, which is by far the most in the National Football League. So until they clean up that part of it, it's hard to buy into the Buffalo Bills being true title contenders, especially with them playing as many one-score games as they've played over the the last couple of years and found themselves on the losing side of them. Nico, this is a team that came into the season as the Super Bowl favorite. Josh Allen came in as the MVP favorite. They are right now in first place. Do you share the same concerns that these guys do about the Bills? Yeah, I, I do share those same concerns. And, and listen, I, I saw a couple of things after that game with body language. Number one being the very last play that Josh Allen scrambled on. He got his legs taken out so hard, and he hit the ground. He almost stayed down for a second. He got up. He shook it off. He ran off the field. Everyone was asking him if he was okay. So, number one, he's taken a lot of damage so far this season. Tons of big hits. We know his elbows hurt. But physically, he's getting beat up. And then after the game, when they won, there was an embrace between Josh Allen and Diggs. They hugged each other. And I think everyone saw that. And, and after the hug, you see Josh Allen kind of just go, <sighs> like, let some air out. He said a word. I can't say the word. But you almost saw a little bit of the frustration <laughs> of that was a lot That was a lot harder. That was a dogfight that we weren't expected to be in. We thought this was just going to be a Thanksgiving, yeah, 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 we have fun, yeah. we eat the turkey. Like, No, it was a battle. And, and he was beat up. He's feeling it. And I think the Bills right now, the team, as a team, we know Von Miller's banged up. I think they're, they're hurting a little bit.
Yeah, look, it has, as they say, been a week uh, for the Buffalo Bills. But you mentioned, Ninko, the Von Miller injury. This was a significant development in this game. Von Miller, their big prize free agent acquisition from the offseason, leaves the game with a knee injury. We don't know the severity of it yet. If he has to miss time, Rob, what does that mean for Buffalo? Not good. I, I think that it takes their Super Bowl aspirations away you needed Von Miller. That's why you went and paid Von Miller, because you needed the closer. You had to have that guy in the fourth quarter when the game's on the line. He's done it this year. That gets a strip sack or a big, big TFL. Von Miller is that guy. So the thing that concerns me, I've torn my ACL before. I know what this, I, and I didn't tear it completely. I sprained it. But the problem is when you sprain it, it's in, it doesn't have the stability. There's no stability, and he's already injured that knee in 2013. So I don't want to speculate that that's what it is, but when you go on a cart and you don't walk off the field, it, it, it makes me a little concerned. Chris, how concerned should the Bills be about Von Miller possibly having to miss time? They should be real concerned because we know what Von Miller means to this team. He's top 10 in sacks, but most importantly, he's third in quarterback pressures on the year behind Micah Parsons and Matt Jadon. That's pretty good company, but in terms of his overall impact on the Buffalo Bills season, think about what Von Miller meant to the Los Angeles Rams last year. I mean, he won a game for him down in Tampa with a strip sack. He was a big part of them putting pressure on Joe Burrow and winning that Super Bowl. That's why they brought him over. They wanted Von Miller to be their version of Charles Haley to kick off this dynastic run that the Buffalo Bills seem poised to go on over the next several years. But without Von Miller, I'm not quite sure that they're going to be able to do that. To Nico's point, Von Miller pass rushers, they're closers. The Buffalo Bills over the last two years, they're 4-9 and nine in one-score games. It's only going to be exponentially harder if you have to try to win those games without Von. Yeah, a lot of depth on that Buffalo defense, but he does seem to be a key piece. So, obviously, we'll keep you updated as we get more information on the Von Miller injury. Now, though, to our DraftKings question. DraftKings Sportsbook Predictions brought to you by DraftKings. Sacho, who will pass for more yards on Sunday night? Aaron Rodgers? Or Jalen Hurts? I changed my answer. First, I went Hurts, and I changed it to Rodgers. We talk about the broken thumb and all those things. But even the last three games, four games, Aaron Rodgers has passed for over 200 yards. Just Jalen Hurts the last two games under 200 yards. And so, I get it. He's injured. They're losing. The, the Eagles are way better. All the things. Aaron Rodgers will have more passing yards. I think Jalen Hurts will have more total yards. All right. Well, let's put the, our picks up for this game. This is Packers-Eagles. It's Sunday night football. And, uh, did anybody pick the Packers for the upset here? I, I'm, I'm looking at the picks. I'm looking at y'all. We're not looking at the picks. I don't think anybody will take our I'm word for it. I'm going to say nobody did. I don't, I... Take our word for it that we all picked the Eagles. Let, so let's – here, here you go. See, we were right. All picked the Eagles. <laughs> anyway, let's live in a world where uh, this happens and Green Bay loses again and they are just about out of the playoff race all but mathematically – what should they do at quarterback? Should they? I mean, should they sit Rodgers and his injured thumb down and play Jordan Love? No, nah, this is an Aaron Rodgers question. This is not an organization question. This dude's got fifty million dollars a year. The next year he has sixty million. Yes. So like forty, what are forty something? This year. Sixty million next year. Aaron Rodgers is in charge. He's in control. They can't sit him. They're paying him too much dinero. Nico, what do you think? I'm ditto on Acho right here. I, I'm saying exactly what Acho was saying. Aaron Rodgers is in the driver's seat. How about you, Chris? Yeah, I think they sit him right after the bye week, use that space to get Jordan Love ready to play the final four games of the season. It doesn't matter about the cap hit. There are ways to manipulate the cap. We saw that with the Philadelphia Eagles. They moved on, ate $34 million of Wentz's contract, made the playoffs. We saw yeah. with the Rams once upon a time, ate $25 million from Jared Goff's contract, won the Super Bowl. So I look at this as a situation where they need to do what's in the best interest of the franchise. Yeah, we'll see what happens there. An increasingly lost season for uh, Green Bay. DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of the NFL. This week, new customers can bet $5 and win $150 in free bets if your team's money line bet wins. Plus, special shout out to any viewers in Maryland in our audience who can now bet with DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app and use code GETUP when you sign up. Coming up, a slow start. And then a second-half explosion for Dak and Dallas. Can the Cowboys catch the Eagles? Are the Giants fading? We will discuss when we come back. 